Well, thanks for joining us here on theCUBE. I'm John Walls, we're at reInvent. AWS's big show going on here in Las Vegas in the Venetian. Going to be here all week, so be sure to tune in here to theCUBE as we continue our executive summit, sponsored by Accenture today. Joined now by Steve Stewart, who's the worldwide principal on mainframe migration and go to market at AWS. Steve, good to see you, sir. Nice to meet you. Just found out we're neighbors, as a matter right. of fact, down in uh, <laughs> northeastern Florida. That's right. So we'll exchange addresses later, I'm sure. <laughs> and Joel Rosenberger, who is a global mainframe modernization lead for the Accenture AWS business group. Joel, good Good to see you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for joining us here on theCUBE. All right, so, so what's up with the mainframe? We're kind of kidding about, about 64 Corvettes versus tw 22 Teslas and making that old Corvette, dress it up, take it out for the street right. ride, make it nice and fun. Um, but, but let's just set the stage here, first off for our viewers, about mainframe and, and um, kind of the, the status in terms of modernization and, and getting it up to 22 standards. Right, I mean, mm -hmm. I, th I think that the big thing is that, you know, modernization for mainframes is different for every customer based on their drivers and where they want to go. You know, at AWS we like to say transform with AWS, yep. augmentation pattern, hybrid pattern, working coexisting, or transform too. So move some of those workloads into, into the cloud. And it's not that, you know, mainframes are fantastic machines, but they are in dire need of modernization with their applications. And that's really the driving force. And the business needs to make a decision based on their drivers, what's best fit for them, and we're here to help. Right. Yep. So, well, how did, Joel, go ahead. Please. Oh, I was going to say, and we're seeing that too, is basically the mainframe is a great technology platform, but it's the processes around that that have not mm -hmm. kept up. So making changes to the mainframe applications can take a couple years. Um, for the simplest changes. And so when Steve talks about modernizing with or on the mainframe, it's really how do we improve those processes? And, and from that perspective, and companies are really struggling with that right now. Yeah, how do, and, and, and how do you go about this? Because the mainframe is so center, right? It is oh, so integral, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely essential, and yet, you're talking about changes being made over a period of time of years? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of sensitivity there, right? A lot Absolutely. of complexity yeah. there. Yeah. So, so how do you start factoring all that in and selling that to somebody that this well, journey might take you till 2025 to get yep. it done? Well, it could be a multi-year process. The selling is really the business drivers. You have to, um, businesses today need to leverage the cloud to be competitive. Absolutely. Right, and that's just a fact, right? Mm -hmm. So, so how do you transform with modernize in place or or transform over? But it is a transformational change. If you look at the number one drivers is is agility. The CEO say, I want this green next week, and well, we can't get it to you next week. We can get it to Q2 of next year. <laughs> Born in a cloud company, that's can probably do it. not the answer they want to hear. <laughs> no, they don't want to hear not that. The answer they Our number hear. one issue is that their CEO is saying that we can't be agile, but mainframes can be agile if you develop, uh, adopt DevOps for your mainframe. Yep. IBM has an offering, we have an offering as well, and so they need to start looking at that. So what are your drivers? Go to market, responsiveness, competitive, what are the drivers? And then you make a decision as to where you want to move the workload. Yep. Is, is it hard though, Joel, just because, as you know, this environment is so dynamic now, right? Yep. And, and, and change is, is rapid, and yeah, I mean like absolutely. with capital R. Yep. So all of a sudden you set this two, three year trajectory, and yet, opportunities, solutions, options can vary in year one or year two, and all of a sudden this right. path you had set is going to have to take a left turn instead of a right turn because of a new development, right? So it's, Absolutely, it, I mean, it, and that's one of the biggest struggles that people have is with business agility. Exactly what you're saying is the market is changing faster. Like Steve said, it might be a year or so before I can deliver that, um, but the market has already changed. Um, right. Um, from my perspective. Right. And so I think a lot of people are trying to modernize with that, so they're connecting a lot of web properties to mainframes, but that causes additional problems. Right. And those problems are the mainframe now scales unpredictably mm -hmm. uh, because I don't know how, how do I predict web traffic and, and, and from that perspective. So a lot of people are struggling, do I have enough capacity on the mainframe to do that? Because it's not elastic right. like the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, fr from that perspective. So, so there's a lot of patterns that, um, that have to be reinvented or, or already been invented with the cloud and how do we do that with the mainframe right. now? So you could get benefits not waiting three to four years. You get benefits Absolutely. pretty much immediately mm -hmm. by doing augmentation patterns, consuming, processing yes. on the mainframe, consuming it, maybe cert moving certain workloads, bringing it on down quicker. You know, if you're a large estate, it'll take you time, but you are able to uh, drive that. Part of our assessments is, 
and bottom up what you currently have and what mm -hmm. are your business drivers? Yep, mm -hmm. What are the big boulder items you need to do mm -hmm. and yep. tackle those? Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, a, it's, it's a process that we work together with our customers to start transforming their mainframe. Right. Yeah, I hear it, about, I'm sorry, oh, go ahead, Joe. Yeah, and a key thing on that is a lot of people look at the mainframe as this big monolith. Right. It's <laughs> basically this big thing I don't know what to do with, I don't want to touch because if I touch it, I might break it, I don't have people <laughs> to fix it. And right. so there's a lot of concern around that. And but one, one of the things like Steve said is how Accenture and AWS work together is figuring out how do I take that monolith, divide it into smaller pieces, either through data augmentation, through an analysis, through, um, and figure out a yeah. roadmap through that, that application, or that monolithic applications well, to figure out how to move. How you eat an elephant, right? right. Yeah, leverage exactly, one, one bite at a time. time. <laughs> just one, one. Right, and just right. leverage AI. Right. Leverage yep. our AI and our platforms and machine learning, yep. and all, these things are available, mm -hmm. uh, and you can coexist with that. All right, so tell me about technical debt. I, I, I read about technical debt, and, mm -hmm. and you know, it's, it, it kind of comes with the territory right. in yep. terms of mainframe. So uh, how do you, first off, you know, how do you define that? And then how do you deal with that? How do you make that go away as far as concerns go? Well, you know, you have to look at your, uh, for my definition of technical debt is the same thing when my wife says I have to do something in the back here and I push it, I'll do it next time, right? So it starts piling up, right? There's a lot of to-dos at the house. Absolutely. Right? It's the same thing as the IT to-dos that you just put off. I'll catch up to that some other time. <laughs> yep. And then you know, they keep on, and so next thing you know you have this, oh my gosh, I got all this work I got to do. Right. And that's part of the technical debt. And then, so you got to look at how does that resolving that meet my needs for the cloud? So leveraging the cloud, if you're on the mainframe, you have limited solutions solutions for addressing your technical debt. Mm -hmm. Leveraging the cloud with the mainframe, now you have multiple options mm -hmm. for you yep. to tackle and eliminate your technical debt. So that's yep. one of the benefits of leveraging the cloud for that. Okay. Yeah, it, and I would add on to what Steve said about technical debt. It's ex exactly <laughs> that is, I haven't done that yet, but one of the things that I've seen is there's multiple ways to solve any problem, any programming problem, technical problem from that. There's a sh shortcut way to get it done quickly right. that may not be clean and scalable and that. Right. And what happens is, especially on the mainframe over 40 or 50 years, a lot of those shortcuts have been taken. And so it's not even as easy, it's basically, think about it, I didn't do it, but now my grass is this high, right? <laughs> and now I got to do it. Um, type of thing, so so it's really about. And you can't use a lawnmower. You can't use a lawnmower, <laughs> right. so you have to figure right. out different ways. Can't bag it. You, you can't bag it. Anything, right? a whole another. Absolutely. <laughs> right. So uh, understanding technical debt and overcoming it is realizing that those short shortcuts need to be rearchitected, redesigned, re modernized right. um, from that perspective, and you need to take that perspective off. So you it. guys have to be kind of sometimes the bearer of bad news in a way, right? Because oh, they have these like you said, monolithic um, uh, systems in place that need revised. They got to yep. be modernized. And they've, they've been kicking that can down the road. We've talked about exactly. some big companies for a long time. So they got a lot of baggage on that side and they have to get up to speed. So if, if you were talking to a prospective client about understanding why it's time to start doing that necessary housekeeping. How do you convince people that, that this is the time? What are your top three absolutely mission critical applications that you have today, right? What is the, the staff that maintains it? What is the average age of those resources? Mm -hmm. And what is your succession strategy? Yep. So it's as simple as that. Oh. I would add on to that. <laughs> A lot of times we don't have to convince the customer right now. Right. The customers are coming to us because right. what's happened <clears throat> is this whole digital uh, transformation that's happening in the web and all that kind of stuff. Right. Their competitors are already moving off of that that's or have come up with something else. So the business is coming and saying, <coughs> why can't I move that fast? Right. And then, like Steve said, is those are the reasons why you can't move that fast, so let's address those reasons. All right, the born in the cloud companies coming in, but also yep. another driving force that's happening, if you look at a lot of our new customers, are the digital natives arriving in the C-suites. Yes. So the, the folks mm -hmm. that have always Absolutely. known the internet, understand the benefits right. of the cloud, or where there's a new CIO, new CEO. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so we're seeing that changing of the guard type yeah. scenario. Because and, a lot of those people grew up with the mainframe. Right, right and uh, of the old guard, sure. yeah. and they're like, well, it's worked for the last 30 years, why don't I just keep it working right. the and same way And don't we it need is. it to work, yeah. right? Yeah. The way exactly. it has been? Yeah. Well, and that's the other key thing is, is the core applications. So what has happened with the cloud is over the last you know, 10, 15 years, is a lot of the um, applications that could move, moved. Now we're left with the core applications on the mainframe. 
And those are the ones that a multi-billion dollar company, if they get that wrong, they're out of business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a lot of scrutiny and a lot of other things. So a lot of the stuff that, um, that we're doing now is to help understand that risk and get over that risk. And do companies have the expertise in-house? to do this or, 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 and, <laughs> and, or, or where do you find it outside because it you know, that, might not be the sexiest thing to do. That's I a mean. great question because, um, you know, Steve and I talk about this all the time, which is running the mainframe is different than modernizing the mainframe. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I might have a lot of skills in house to run the mainframe, but how do I figure out to get, to break up that monolith into pieces? Right. How do I figure out, um, you know, how the best you, way to put that on AWS? Right. How do I figure that out? You need to leverage right. people like AWS is, and Accenture and others to right. be able to do that. This is, there's a psychology to this and more technical. It's more psychological than technical. Okay. So you got to find your unicorns. People who have gas in the tank yep. that want to adopt. Absolutely. And the ones that don't, then you know, they're, they're out. You know, nothing like uh, passive aggressive people showing up to help to really cause havoc. And, <laughs> and, and, and that's really what you got to kind of focus on. Yes, we see that on. a lot. <laughs> right, right. But that's where the managed service comes in too, right? I mean, you, 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 can, you can get people there. You can, well, this yeah. is a, a worry, they can check the box and move on and, and get help in that Yeah, regard. at AWS, this is an industry first, where you yep. have a managed service within your console to provision toolings to analyze, develop for the mainframe, or deploy onto AWS, but the running of it, specific servers that have been you know, optimized for mainframe workloads with mm -hmm. your monitoring and security and all those things. It's an industry first. I've been in this business 30 years. It's fantastic mm -hmm. with what I'm seeing over here. And do you have any kind of a guess about, about what share is still out there to be had in terms of modernizing mainframes and in terms of businesses? I mean, are, are there still, well, you know, it might be hard to put a quantify it with a number, but there's still a lot oh, of folks oh, yeah. who haven't made that commitment yet. Well, they're, and uh, they're beginning to. So if you look at, I think, I'm going to throw a number, I think it's like 80% of the Fortune 100 companies have mainframes. Absolutely. Is that right? So yeah, yeah. so if you yeah. paid your mortgage today, if you use your cell phone today, right. if you've done any of those things, core stuff is, is run on, on mainframes. And financial transactions, right? Financial huge. Financial transactions. Oh, huge, yeah. huge. You know, but all, airlines, yeah. manufacturing, yeah. healthcare, right. all, all, pretty much everything runs on a mainframe if you go deep enough in the organization. Sure. Right. And, sure. and so that's all, you know, people are making those decisions. And what, what we've done is what I call an earned trust moment. You know, AWS standing up and saying, hey, we're here to help our customers to move. Mm -hmm. We're a large organization, yep. we're doing heavy investments in this. We have R&D and staff to help our customers transform with mm -hmm. or to AWS. And, and we're seeing that resonate in the marketplace. So last year, AWS announced the mainframe modernization service. Over the last year, we've seen clients, like I said, is they're coming to us now saying right. we want to go mainframe zero, uh, mm. for, for lack right. of a better expression. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're just seeing a lot of activity. So what AWS did last year has really resonated within the marketplace and changed that dynamic. Well, the mainframe ain't dead yet. And, no, uh, it isn't. And, and, and it's not going to die. Isn't. No, I, think, I think there's going to be a different. Too big, too powerful, and yeah, too I necessary. Think it's going to coexist with it. And and some, some will leave, yep. so. Well, but gentlemen. you still need that same functionality just somewhere else. All right, that's right. <laughs> well, and appreciate the conversation, neighbor. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> have a great show. Look forward to seeing All you right. down the road here. Thank right. you very much. All right, Joel, appreciate Steve, it. thanks Thank for joining us here. Bye. You are watching theCUBE here at reInvent 22, and theCUBE, as I remind you, is the leader in high-tech coverage.